Okay, uh, dear Dhamma friends, we have come to the last uh, question and answer session of this uh, Kalal Goda English Medium Retreat and we have received several written questions and we will start the session with written questions. We have received four reports. Yeah. Report number one, Most Venerable Bhante, I find it much easier to do Anapana Sati compared to Metta meditation. I have a tendency of doing metta meditation while doing make it, sorry I have a tendency of doing metta meditation while doing walking meditation is this wrong does it result in me not doing either one properly also I feel the foundation for my metta meditation is fairly superficial what could I do to cultivate it more please advise Theruvan Saranai yeah, actually, as you all know, metta meditation comes under samatha practice. So it is, uh, if you want to put it into vipassana, you have to reach somewhat uh, higher levels. Like uh, we discussed in the morning, uh, you got to come to uh, the level of metta cheto vimutti, or you have to attain jhana. While being in jhana, you have to emerge from that and reflect the jhana factors. So likewise, uh, certain uh, improvements have to be done if you have to uh, change it to vipassana but on the other hand uh, uh, other meditations like walking meditation and while walking you are trying to experience various phenomena happening uh, momentarily so that indicates more a realistic type of uh, phenomena happening right now happening at that very moment and those are coming under the dhatu manasikara via um, satipatthana so that those are more into the vipassana so if you are practicing uh, metta meditation while walking, so that that indicates that you are doing some some other practice even while in the walking meditation. So the advantages of walking meditation you may not get in, in that sense. Because in walking meditation, uh, one understanding or one uh, technique is that uh, you know you got to uh, keep your attention on the foot and then and there your attention has to be focused and uh, that experience is quite momentary and your mind has to be well focused there and properly aimed and again uh, it has to be aimed left side again it has to be aimed right side so likewise the aiming is one important aspect of your meditation because say for example in the long run say you are observing various phenomena happening throughout the body so you should be able to quickly aim your attention to that particular place and then you start the investigation. So this aiming, properly focusing your attention, wherever it is available, the phenomena in your body, it's a kind of a skill that we need to develop. So you are learning that through uh, walking meditation because when your left foot is touching the ground, you have to focus there. When your right foot is touching the ground, you have to focus there. Now you have to do it quickly and you have to do it precisely. So this is the skill that we are developing. And uh, on the other hand, while walking happens, you have to quickly uh, collect the data. On the other hand, on the way you are, you are collecting data, very much like. On the go, you are collecting data. Say, foot is on the ground, now quickly you are there and you are trying to investigate. Again, your foot is on the ground, quickly you are trying to investigate. So likewise, uh, another approach is there. So another thing is there for you to conduct. So, but if you are doing, uh, say, metta meditation, so none of them you are doing. So you are mentally thinking about someone, you are thinking about a group, or you may be even thinking about uh, yourself, and you are, you are sort of having a kind of a wish, that may I be well, may I be happy, may I be free from suffering, so likewise, so you are in a kind of a condition realm, condition uh, activities, and uh, you are more into the concepts. But in the walking, typical walking meditation in, uh, say, in Kayanupasana, so we are trying to penetrate the concepts. Now there is no I doing it, there is no you doing it. Rather, certain very primary, primordial kind of uh, experiences are there hardness, roughness, softness, and those doesn't belong to anyone. And they are completely conditioned phenomena. 
they are not concepts, they are conditioned due to various causes. And you are observing those realistic condition phenomena. So there's a huge difference, therefore. So, so therefore, if you are doing uh, metta while walking, uh, I mean, metta may be drawing, but not the advantages that you are trying to, or you are supposed to get from walking meditation that you are be getting or harnessing. So that is the point you need to understand. Yeah. Report number two, Teruan Saranai. Garutra Swami in Vahansa. This is the first time I joined a three-day retreat program. When I came on Friday, I had a very disturbing mind and couldn't hang on in one place or I couldn't sit in one place for more than 30 minutes. After joining the program, now I can sit in one place for more than one hour. I tested it and, I, and also I can concentrate better. Feel peaceful. Still, mine runs lesser than earlier. I wish to let you know I am very grateful to have given this opportunity to me. Also, Dhamma sermons very truthful and it touches heart in better way. I must thank everybody who work hard to give others a better understanding in life and to you, Garutra Swami in Vahansa, giving valuable advices to get along with Dhamma life. I will continue practicing every day. Teruan Saranai. Good, good. Yeah, you can, do, you can continue. And actually the Buddha's teaching is uh, therefore inviting us to come and see. Ehi <laughs> Pasiko. Right. Report number three. Most Venerable Bhante. My question is relevant to today's Dhamma discussion. We discussed above Cheto Vimukti, Anishrita, Nirodha. Please be kind enough to elaborate the differences between these three mind states. Much merit to you, Bhante. Okay, uh, there are some similarities also. Uh, thing is, uh, say for example, uh, you are developing, uh, how to say, some vipassana. Say, Vedana Nupassana. And again and again, you are observing different feelings and you are developing some amount of insight, wisdom, because of the observation. And uh, after some time, then you feel, okay, these are not a single uh, feeling, but a collection of minute feelings are there. Now you are understanding further grows. And uh, now you are coming to another level, okay, these are quite transient phenomena. They are not uh, lasting for a long time. Quite transient, impermanent. So your understanding further develops. And may, probably you may even understand, okay, this transiency, this uh, impermanent nature is something common to all the conditioned phenomena. And uh, these all conditioned phenomena are oppressed by this arising and passing away. And you have no control over it. So likewise, you are underst your understanding broadens. Now, as you are broadening your understanding, so as we discussed uh, yesterday, one important result is rather than grasping, you, your mind starts to let go. Your mind starts to have a kind of a dispassion, disenchantment. Because that is not, I mean, what you are thinking as good, what you are thinking as happy, what you are thinking as impermanent, what you are thinking as myself, no more myself, no more happy, no more worthy of attaching or considering as me or myself, so mind may slowly start to let it go. And once it let it go, assume that it has completely let go of whatever the phenomena, even for a short time, then we can say, okay, mind does not associate anything. Like we discussed yesterday, say you are using rupa uh, kamattana, anapana sati, say uh, whatever the element characteristics, so different things are there. Or you can use uh, Vedana Gammatthana, various feelings. Or you are observing the mind, mental states. So whatever the way, so one important result is that it, mind may understand their impermanent, unsatisfactory, non-self nature and let go of the whole thing. And mind becomes somewhat independent, free. Not, not associating anything, kind of a secluded. So there we can call it's anisita. 
unassociated. But the point is, uh, even though we, we are sort of using our practice, even though we come here, so still latent tendencies are quite operating. I mean, operating at, I mean, at the moment due to our practice, they are somewhat weak. But after some time, they start to again activate and ultimately we go and again attach. So the, the time period that we are able to maintain the anisita state, the unassociated, unassociated state, is limited. So that's why we need to improve it. We need to enhance this uh, unassociated state, anisita state, anupadana state, non-grasping state, more and more, so that mind become more and more used to it. So far, so far, mind is more used to or familiarized with grasping. Now we are developing kind of a non-grasping way of living. Now, suppose you are able to develop it, then assume that you can extend, ex extend it for 10, for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So likewise, you are maintaining unassociated state of mind for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So you can see it's a kind of a development. You are training the mind. And then actually you may understand it's a kind of a concentration. Now, Mind is concentrated on this non-grasping state. You can maintain it. So there we can call it as animita samadhi, appanihita samadhi, sunyata samadhi. It's a kind of a type of concentration and you can be there. Now in that sense the anisita state is further enhanced and you have developed it. It is lasting for a long time. Now another point is, as you are further improving, so this, say at that time, another way of explanation is now very much like you are in a cocoon and uh, there are no uh, sort of obstacles coming on your way in, in within your circle. So this is very much like how you experience it, like I mean, Thoughts are about to come, but they are going. Sounds are there, but they can't penetrate. Say, sights are there, they, they can't disturb. So you are in a kind of a bunker, kind of a, uh, within a kind of a fence, kind of a protective fence is there. So the external phenomena can't penetrate. But certain uh, serious ones, say certain stronger ones, still can come through and disturb you, can't tell. So anyway, now as you are progressing, so this boundary start to enhance, progress, enlarge. Suppose at a given time, it has become so large, no boundary, spreaded throughout the whole universe, then we can call it as Cheto Vimutti, which you come through uh, Vipassana, by the way. So you started with Animitta, or this quite anisita, and then you reach kind of a samadhi, animitta samadhi, and ultimately you end up with animitta cheto vimutti. So therefore, even through vipassana, you can touch different levels. So, so therefore, Buddha explains it many different ways for that for us to understand. So different approaches are there, different methods are there for you to reach that, and further to cultivate it and then to enhance it to a very higher level, Cheto Vimutti level. So in the Cheto Vimutti level, what we call as the freedom of mind, so your mind is completely not established anywhere, no boundaries, it's completely unlimited, limitless, measureless, fully open. Where has it established? <laughs> No, yeah, right? I mean, it can't establish anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's completely free. So the other part is interesting. Now, this, this Cheto Vimutti you can derive through some of the practice also, even with the metta. Say you are developing metta towards, uh, towards yourself, then towards another person in front of you, another person on to your, your right side onto your behind, onto your left side, onto your upper side, onto the ground side. Now you are sort of developing metta towards many different directions, to many different people, many different beings. 
now you are slowly breaking the barriers previously you could only do only to a particular group of people only to sri lankans <laughs> now maybe even to the indians even to the australians <laughs> <laughs> so likewise now you are enhancing your metta capability skill to the whole uh, world whole universe now mind is fully open again no barriers no boundaries boundless through metta so therefore cheto vimutti is possible either you either with uh, samatha or either with uh, vipassana and that's why i mean if you are trying to develop vipassana through samatha say in uh, using metta if you are able to develop metta cheta vimutti that can be used as a kind of a ground as a very established level of your mind and you can cultivate that you can familiarize that and be there dwell there and now after you become confident you allow it to you allow the mind to behave as it wish now again it go as an attach with something but you are fully aware of it and remove the attachment so likewise as you do in the vipassana practice so you can use metta cheto vimutti as a kind of a ground level basement baseline reference for you to cultivate vipassana so there are therefore certain differences are there at the earlier stages what you are experience is a very short time short uh, a very narrow kind of focused anisthita state unattached state it's very fragile but later you are enhancing it expanding it and it lasts for long time but still some boundary within a particular boundary and later you can develop it to the level of becoming boundless no barriers now so completely the mind is open so you can see the potential of the mind can imagine what a potential we have but typically i mean i am just thinking about fuel thinking about bread see i mean how how much we are in a way uh, really narrowed our mind our way of the our potential human potential is so vast but we we don't understand it we don't uh, think that i have this kind of potential my mind has this kind of a potential so that is why buddha again and again emphasize pabassara midam bikkave chittang tanchako agantuke upakkilese upakkiritang monks this uh, the original nature of the mind is so luminous only because of this outer shield that it has become uh, corrupted or polluted hindered so once you remove the outer sheath again the original nature of the mind this pure nature of the mind boundless nature of the mind is available so therefore it's a kind of a eye opening statement that buddha is making us uh, telling us that we all as human beings have this potential so therefore he mentioned that whoever believing me trust me they have a chitta bhavana they have they they are putting some effort to achieve it knowing that they have this human potential so it is not something that we are trying to artificially uh, impose on to ourselves so our very nature is this potential but unfortunately we are completely bounded or completely hindered restricted by all these typical mundane trivial things <laughs> gas price no gas no bread no fuel no dollars <laughs> so that is the trivial thing i mean of course those are matters true but as human beings we have more potential to explore to expand ourselves to open up ourselves so vast potential is available in the human mind so therefore but the invites us to see come and see your potential interesting it is not my potential or it is not buddha's potential every human being has this potential okay yeah that's all so the, oh no one else yeah one thing can i ask a question on that what yeah. you so within this uh, within the boundary level when we are when we are in the cocoon 
we mm. don't like though we hear noises and everything we are not uh, getting carried away by that mm -hmm. we can just go on and then the boundless level you don't hear anything so where is the consciousness then no that's the thing i mean can't say you don't hear anything you can't see anything so it's very much like i can say now when buddha explain it to, now so some if if you have a very higher concentration even during the boundless level then you can say so telling that you can't hear any sound any noise or any of those things because it is being further further strengthened by the concentration power but on the other hand uh, say when buddha is explaining dhamma to bahya ditya ditta mattam bhavisati sute sute mattam bhavisati mute mute mattam bhavisati vinyate vinyata mattam bhavisati so that means uh, he can see but that's it he don't go for any proliferation he can hear that's it he don't go for any proliferation and he can sense smell taste that's it no proliferation and even thought comes and it will go and he is not disturbed now i feel i mean this is also a type of cheto vimutti because his mind is free and his mind is not interested of getting entangled with anything getting confused with anything getting involved with anything it has it has its own freedom and then buddha further mention if you are doing so yatojako bahiya ditte ditta mattam bhavisati sute sute mattam bhavisati mute mutta mattam bhavisati vinyate vinyata mattam bhavisati tato tvam bahiya neva idana hurang na ubhe mantare so then you are not here not here not here not there not in between so there is no i making using this this what you call as internal as yourself or oh, you are not making any i using any external phenomena or anything in between so there is no i making there is no i anywhere so your mind is unestablished consciousness is unestablished and buddha may mention ese vanto dukkhas this is the end of suffering so i mean assume that someone is able to have this kind of a experience at least for 5 minutes then he can't feel kind of a suffering because one important cause of suffering is i <laughs> so till you feel i till you feel i am till you feel that uh, this is mine myself all these things that generate some kind of suffering some kind of stress either you feel conceited either you feel i am not happy uh, it's not good enough i am worrying he is better than me so like some sort of a comparison ultimately making kind of a suffering because i is there but when buddha mentioning that there is no i here or there or in between so that means altogether there is no establishment of uh, i mean mind consciousness then there is no i making mind making any conceit that is i mean at least for temporary that you are free from suffering so so your question is that uh, within yeah those two times uh, now i understand yeah, where yeah. is the consciousness but then one more thing now in the morning also you mentioned so where is nibbana so dhamma jiva yeah. bhante also mentions often Uh, where is nibbana i did a, i did i mention <laughs> something something uh, some uh, some saryutham uh, dro samvana sveis nibbana so that's okay. yesterday okay so i was just thinking on that yeah, time yeah, yeah. then i was just thinking damajiva bante often says metrina kavrut nivana dakapu nathi aya nahe so is that this within the cocoon or outside cocoon state <laughs> 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 i can't ask this from the amateur bhante <laughs> no i think uh, uh, i mean uh, thing is i mean different explanations we can give and one interesting uh, explanation buddha has given is akinchanam anadanam etan deepam anaparam nibbanam iti tamrumi ja jaramarana parikkhyaṃ or something uh, akinchanaṃ anādānaṃ akinchana means that you have nothing anādānaṃ means you have no grasping etaṃ dīpaṃ na aparaṃ this is the island nothing else 
Nibbana miti thambrumi, and I call it as Nibbana. <laughs> so whenever there is nothing to call this is I, this is mine, this is myself, this belongs to me, so that, is, that you have something, no? So when mind is completely free in that sense, not uh, claiming anything, not, not uh, centering at any particular place, not uh, measuring. Akinchana has a kind of a depth in that sense. I mean, literally it means nothing. Basically nothing, nothingness in that sense. Anadhanang means no, no grasping at all. No, no grasping. Akinchanang anadhanang, etan deepang na aparang. So this is the island, nothing else. Nibbana miti thambru means, so I call it as Nibbana. This is a statement made by the Buddha. Actually, what has happened to us as Buddhists is we have actually, now during the Buddha's time, the Arahans and the others, whoever they're practicing, so for them, I think Nibbana also is something kind of a, I mean, obvious thing. They are experiencing it, practicing it, living it, being in it. And they are, they are and ultimately they are, removing the defilements and ultimately they get on to the Parinibbana. Later people don't practice, but they want to intellectualize, philosophize, philosophize, right? So they put Nibbana in a very higher pedestal. Nobody can imagine it even. <laughs> not, not in this life. No, no, never. You don't have enough parami. You are not a Trihetuka Pandisandhi. You don't, you can't do it. <laughs> So you have put Nibbana in a so high place, so our Buddhists can't imagine it even. I can't, I know it's very far, I mean only for the Buddhist, it is only during the very long ago, now I have to wait till the Metta, Maitreya Buddha to come. Now the time has gone. So we, are, we have become so kind of negative in that sense. Because uh, without practicing, we were sort of uh, analyzing it superficially, not doing it. So therefore, as Bhante Dhammajiva mentioned, so if you are able to at least temporarily produce this state of mind, where, where you don't feel that I am available at any particular place, there's no I make in mind making, and your mind is not attached or hooked up with anything. So it's a kind of a Nibbana that you are experiencing. And sometimes Buddha referred it as uh, uh, what you call uh, 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 not achant, uh, tadanga nibbuti. So tadanga nibbuti means reference. I mean, uh, uh, tadanga uh, relative relative kind of uh, nibbana. Relatively, your mind is free. So previously, now even today that we discuss in Pottapada Sutta, so relatively your mind is refined. So assume that your mind previously associating Kama Chanda. A lot of sensual desires are there. You are burning with lust. Say you are, you are associating uh, Vyapada, burning with anger and mostly sleeping. Or maybe a lot of uh, stress, a lot of doubts and uh, say restlessness. Now all these are burning states to the mind. Suppose now you are able to overcome all these uh, hindrances, then relatively you can say, oh, I am in Nibbana. I mean comparatively you are in a better, better position. Now suppose you are further refining yourself, you are coming to the first jhana. Relatively much better, coming to the second jhana, even better. So likewise you are moving forward, now, ultimately if you are letting go everything and mind become completely free, even much better. And then again you can argue, so why I can't maintain it? Then the answer is coming, I have still defilements. Even though I am temporarily experiencing some sort of Nibbana, still I can't maintain it, I can't be there because again mind go and attach. Again mind go and uh, sort of hate, get entangled deluded. So then I have to answer these root causes. Why I am not being able to dwell in the Nibbana, in that Cheto Vimutti. Then we have to answer the root causes, eliminate the root causes, Loba Dosa Moha. Then we can say, okay, now the person is naturally in Nibbana. 
That's why, I mean, sometimes Nibbana is defined. Say, for example, one time, uh, Venerable Sariputta explain it, define it, Ragakkayo, Dosakkayo, Mohakkayo, Nibbana. So complete eradication of Raga, lust, complete eradication of Dosa, complete eradication of Moha as Nibbana. And therefore, I mean, temporarily we can subside them and have a kind of a temporary Nibbana, but again you may start to burn after some time. After some time, again burning. So Nibbana is calming down, cooling, uh, extinguishing all the fires. But if it is again burning, so that means you have to answer those root causes. So that is where the practice is important, the vipassana is important to recognize the defilements, to recognize those root causes and to eliminate those root, root causes. Then, I mean, you don't need to worry because you are done. <laughs> Number four, Venerable Bhante, I am asking this on behalf of a Dhamma friend. She has been practicing Anapanasati very well and feel the sensations on nostrils very well, which she is in Vitakka Vichara state. She can watch her mind too, but she has been unhappy about the progress of her practice. Then she was told by one of her colleagues, it is due to her not maintaining one-pointedness for some time. Rather, she has to be in that state for some time before moving on. Appreciate your advice on this. Uh, can you repeat the middle part that uh, you are, I mean, uh, she, she had a kind of a what? Uh, <coughs> she, uh, she can watch her mind too, but she has been unhappy about the progress of her practice. Then she was told by one of her colleagues, it is due to her not maintaining one-pointedness for some time. Mm -hmm. Rather, she has to be in that state for some time before moving on. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate your advice. Yeah, so that is true. Now, if you are in the Samatha practice, so in no, I mean, before you move forward, you have to fairly establish yourself in the first jhana, for example. Now, if you are too quick to move to second jhana, you might lose both. You are even losing the first and not well established in the second either. So before you move forward to first, second jhana, you have to fairly practice the first jhana for some time and you have to season it, you have to uh, familiarize with it. Then you yourself may understand what are the disadvantages of such jhana. Then automatically mind may incline towards second jhana. So that is a kind of a advice typically... Uh, the teachers are giving and even the Buddha is giving and Buddha has also given a kind of nice simile, I can't remember exactly. So Buddha also mentioning now, before you move forward, first be familiarized, be well established, season in that whatever the state, consolidate that state and then you can move forward. And even sometimes uh, advice now, typically, in order to verify which jhana you are in, one, one method is to reflect the jhana factors. With Akka, Vichara, Pita, Sukha, Ekhagata, I mean, if you are able to recognize these jhana factors, you can say, okay, all five jhana factors are there, so I was in first jhana. And when you are, uh, when you are reflecting, if you only could find, uh, say, Pita, Sukha, Ekhagata, there is no Vitakka, Vichara, Okay, you can say, I was in second jhana. So likewise, you got to reflect the jhana factors. And even that reflection is not advisable to do for beginners. Because when you are doing the reflection, you are disturbing jhana. So while completely absorbed in jhana, you can't do anything. You, you are just there. You just locked there. And if you are to do the reflection, you have to come out of jhana, and then you have to reflect, okay, these are the certain qualities that I has experienced just before. So that's how the uh, reflection happens. So if you are doing it prematurely, so it is harmful. So therefore, first of all, you have to consolidate the jhana. And once you are confident, then only you have to emerge from it and then reflect what are the jhana factors. So some uh, practices are there. So when one do the samatha practice, 
So as you as this uh, yogi has mentioned, so if you are too hurry to go move forward, so it's uh, it's not good. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Uh, switched off, I think. Switched off, is it? For a yogi who wants to do vipassana, does that yogi have to go vi beyond vitaka vichara or go, go pretty sukha? You can kanika samadhi, have kanika samadhi, and then go for vipassana. You don't need to have all the three. No, vipassana is more natural. Vipassana is more natural. Actually, uh, say inter. I mean, at the beginning, as you said, it may be the kanika samadhi. Momentarily, your mind is concentrated then and there. As you are going, moving forward in whatever the experience, so momentarily, each and every moment, your mind is concentrated. And uh, as you are going through, as you are sort of, uh, say, uh, deflecting or rather investigating, so then it is enhanced into the other levels, other, other experiences, other insights. And... Uh, Say, um, and uh, say for example, uh, so if your mind let go of everything, that means even the vitakka is absent. So there is no vitakka, I mean, suppose you are in anisita state. So where are the I'm not, I'm not going that far for uh -huh. a beginner yogi who is doing, uh, starting from anapana, uh -huh. does uh, concentrate or just come to samatha. Yeah. Uh, not to go for concentration, right. then you, you get vitaka, then you keep for a little while, you observe your breath, yeah. and then you go to the sensations. Like yeah. so, they are so then you present. don't need to go preeti, sukha ekagrata, that level, no, the jhana levels. Yes, no? yes, so yes. from there, they can turn to vit, uh, vipassana, vipassana, and then. They are the vitaka which are present. Every yes, time it they is are present. vitaka which are present. present yes. And then you continue with vipassana. Correct. So for that kind of a yogi, you can't say that yogi is not developed, right? So, you know, not developing inner meditation. If she can watch her mind. Uh, uh, are you are referring to this? Yes, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Question, yeah, yeah, yeah. question. Yeah. So actually, I answered because this is very much like oriented towards some other Samata. practice. No, actually. But, but uh, on the other hand, if this yogi wants to develop in the vipassana, vipassana. practice, definitely, Vitaka I mean, the vipassana vichar. vichar is present, and uh, and you have to, you can't force by the way to progress. Rather, you need to continue the practice. Then naturally, it may evolve to the next level. So that's why, I mean, so on the other hand, Samatha Yogi, say he, if he is in the first jhana for some time, he can willfully try to go to the second jhana. Yeah. That's why he prematurely try to go there. Yes. Intentionally go there. It is harmful, by yes. the way. Yes, yes. But on the other hand, in Vipassana, even you have an intention, you can't get an insight. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's an insight practice, no, it is not, a, it is not something uh, that you are conditioned in the mind. You can't, I mean, these, these insights, you can't condition, you can't inject to the mind. You can have some understanding, okay, that is what we do uh, in the, say, we are certain uh, perceptions, good perceptions, anicca sanya, anatta sanya, adhinava sanya, so like uh, different good proper perceptions are there, no? So you are learning about them, you are understanding them. So it's a kind of a preparing the mind. True. But still you haven't experienced for yourself. But to experience for yourself, you have to continue the practice properly. Then naturally they, they have to come. It is not that you intentionally do it or intentionally gain it, acquire it. Rather you are continuing the practice then when mind reaches naturally to a particular level, it may happen. It's a completely cause and effect. Yeah. So as you pointed out, so if this, this yogi is talking on the uh, vipassana point of view, so the vitakka vichara is definitely there. Yeah. yeah. And that is enough to the turn to vipassana and do the satipatthana, like, you know, the yes. vedana anupassana and all that yes. chitta anupassana. Yeah. So for somebody who does, I mean, can watch the mind, know what is happening, yeah. that you can't say that 
that yogi is not developing. It's no, definitely not. Yes, okay. definitely Thank not. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for safeguarding Vipassana. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> then one Sunday. Swamin Rahan sir, Anatma Sajnava Vedunod Maitri Vya Bhavanava Kila Vinamakavan Dona Vinna Ani. Ani teka eka sudh sudh ne. Eka nda api hitan na api Anatma Sajnava Sajahen na vadala te no. Ito api te no. Mitanat kenek ne, mitanat mamek ne, liyat kenek ne, mitanat puj liyat puj liyat ne. Yaa siddhuri tika kavila viyakt karna va. Mata ni kang itu nak kaut kata, tapi kita gigi ham mata wajib ni ada. Nampak situ ni tika kavi lah. Eka tanya aku react kan nawa, and eka permanent dia ni me. Eka situ ni tika gigi ham just puppet like that. Kira lah eka personalise kawan ni ane tu. Hari. Eka ini dia. Atar dia no. Itu ada eka mai tu ya deh. Eka mai tu ada. Mai tu ada walau tu pasal nak kita tu mungkin ni. Mungkin tu mama COVID tu ada kaleng, macam tu bawa nak cover minggu ni ya. Hari. At at one point, I couldn't do it. Hari. Ekian time, kalau begini, anak kau tu mukut situ ini nato, just just still. Hari. Then sama ini nasib macam tu, kalau kawan deh, pa macam tu bawa nak kira la. Itu apa bagi anak mae wedding anak kau tu ibe mae macam tu wedding orang. Oh, ini dia tino. Ani mana? Ikan apa? Atau mana hewan kualiti kau tino? Atu le macam tu kira la. Eka, eka apa ni kang, dana tak kerana apa itu? Saya hendak buat apa? Kelas sila, akhirnya la ni ni kelas bahulah ni la, ini hendak apa ni kang baling maitri korono. Balap balap, ya aku meten honda ini, bodak bodak maitri kerapan, maitri kerapan kila bodak kiting baling korono. Muda, itu la ganda dia agni. Hei, bi pasan agal la, ya aku tak, ini hendak mana ukur mati sudde la, ya aku ni. Karena badeli ya, aku ukur sudde la, ya aku. Itu pasti ting naturally tino maitri ya. Jadi ayam, muting, ting, main tree kerana dia ikut naya. Ikan ini, ikan yang kiu ye, dan budhaan tu ikan kian ni. Inherently we are good people. Inherently our minds are quite pure minds. But it is being quite polluted because of the defilements. But in case you are able to associate a kind of a pure state for a long time, then that indicates that this purity has its the good nature has the, say, uh, whatever the human good qualities are inherently available. Then, itanna then, buddhurayana nuhanse veva, kaudha apitum sariputta maharatan nuhanse veva, then sariputta maharatan nuhanse, me pirinuvan paan, onna menna tila, yano, me ammata ghihilla udhau karanna, me ayavat harimargeeta ganna keela, neda. Dhetanat maitriyat tila, neda. Eta kota ekeyan ne, Jadi, sampunnya itu dalam rahatnya cahitak ni. Tiap rahatnya cahitak, kalau api terkian berani me maitreing condition ni lah kira ni. Inherently the qualities dia. Tapi hinda kau ruhari hendu itu anatma sanjaya wak, nanti anat insight tega hendu berdala tienna nang. Me non self kena insight tega hendu tienna nang. Tiap ayat mama ni duk kema, mama ni duk kema, kira dia contradicting. Because I mean, you well understood that there is no person here. Now you are wishing, may I be well? May <laughs> kind of not not coming well. I mean, it's, it's not not proper. So there you just develop the vipassanas. I mean, this vipassana itself has strong uh, what you call the wholesome power. So you'll be protected. I mean, if there is some come or some reason, you can die. I mean, doesn't matter. <laughs> Can't help. <laughs> so, matter uh, itna, I think, I practice kalla tapata me ma me vinam practice kava pun ati ayata me situ bilya apu hamu kohmada react kava ne kiela. Ima just pass away. Hari, awa ek minute pula. Ewa ge. Get luck na. Ika ne kohmat. Ika ne api vipassana wa kardno kotha maithri wa ge deval lada vada. I think vinat petta king a qualities tikang. Huru ena katia tiennu amat nang hiten ni, abai mande ting, itu na abai kapartan me kapain nahe ting. Muka tu deng, thamang gada balaga nang mood deka kut tiennu ani, ni de. Abai ting dewal deka tada ane ane, me katam panla dene ane, udau karan ane ane, ni kang pota side deka ini ni. Ti dor deka ni muka tu nahe ni ayu isar nang oya hemane me me, me katam awa matam me katam udau kala, dene nang oya ini ni. 
කියලා ඉතින් එහෙමත් කියනවා ඉතින් මොකද එතන එතන තියෙන්නේ අර මැචුරිටි එකත් එක්ක ආපු මේ සෙක්ලූෂන් එක ඉස්සර නිකන් ඉමෝෂනලි අපි ගිහින් we are getting involved too much emotionally go and involve but now you have some sort of maturity so you mind your own business in case it's relevant to you 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 go and intervene otherwise with invitation you do it unnecessarily you are not going there sarna sita vilavati no na mata poda vilavati no vilavati no ee ava pahadili namu tav chutta clear kawa ganna kemathi me vinjana pachya nama ane etana poddak mata අපි <laughs> 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 කෙනෙක් ඒකට ඇඳනවා නම් නමක් දෙනවා නම් ඒ කියන්නේ අපේ විඥාන එක ඒක විඥාන එක පැටලු වුණා කියලා හිතාගන්න. නාම රූපයක් පහළ වුණා ඒක විඥාන එක ගිහලා පැටලු වුණා මුල් බැහැගත්තා. ඉතින් ඒකට අපි නමක් ගමන් දීලා දැන් සංස්කරණ සිද්ධ වෙනවා. එතකොට ඉතින් ගැලවීමක් නැහැ මේක අස්සේ දැන් රිංග ගත්තා. එතකොට හිතන්න දැන් නාම රූපයක් පහළ වුණා හැබැයි නිකන් ඔහේ නිකන් ඒක බොඳ වෙලා ගියා. කෙහෙවත් කොහෙවත් දැවටුනේ නැහැ. ඒ කියන්නේ දැන් විඥානයට බැහැගන්න විදිහක් නැහැ. එතකොට ඒ කියන්නේ දැන් මේ නාම රූපයකට හොඳට බැහැ ගන්න නම් එහෙමනම් විඥානයක පෝෂණය අවශ්‍ය වෙනවා විඥානයක පිහිටීම අවශ්‍ය වෙනවා බැරි වෙලාවත් මෙබඳු විඥානයෙන් ලැබෙන සපෝට් එකක් තිබුණ නැත්තම් එතකොට නාම රූපයත් නිකන් බොඳ වෙලා යනවා දිය වෙලා යනවා ඒක වර්ධනය වෙන්න හැකියාවක් නැහැ ඊළඟට නාම රූපයක් නැත්තම් ඉතින් නම් මෙයාට කොහොමත් ඉතින් පැවැත්මක් නැහැ මෙයාට බැහැ ගන්න කියලා මොකක් මෙයාට තනියෙන් බැහැනේ තොර එයා ඒක විඥානයේ නාම රූපයේ මත රැඳෙනවා කියද්දි තොර මෙයාට හොඳට පැලපදියන් වෙන්න නම් මුල් බැස ගන්න නම් එයාටත් අරයගේ මේ සපෝට් එක අවශ්‍යයි. එයා උපයෝගී කරගෙන තමයි මෙයත් නිකන් ගහයි වැලයි දෙකක් එකට බැඳිලා යනවා වගේ තමයි දෙපැත් එක්සැක්ට්ලි අන්න එකයි දෙපැත්තටම ඉන්ටර්ලේටඩ්. විඥාන පච්චයා නාම රූපන් නාම රූප පච්චයා විඥාන. ඔතන විතරයි තියෙන්නේ නිකන් ඩබල් සයිඩඩ් රිලේෂන්ෂිප් එකක්. දැන් අනිත් ඒවේ හැමතැනම තියෙන්නේ අවිද්‍යා පච්චයා සංඛාර. අවිද්‍යාව නිසා සංස්කාර සිදු වෙයි. අර සංස්කාර පච්චා විඥානං සංස්කාර නිසා විඥාන සිදු වේ. අර විඥාන පච්චා නාම රූපං විඥානේ නිසා නාම රූපේ සිදු වේ. ඊට පස්සේ නාම රූප පච්චා සලායතරන් මේ දිගට යනවා. හැබැයි මෙතන විඥාන පච්චා නාම රූපං කියන එකකට අමතරව නාම රූප පච්චා විඥානං කියලා සන්ධියක් තියෙනවා. එතකොට එතන තමයි ඉන්ටර්ලේෂන්ෂිප් එකක් තියෙන්නේ. එතන තමයි බුදුරජාණන් වහන්සේ පෙන්වන හරි ගැඹුරක් තියෙන්නේ. ඒක තමයි දිය සුලියක් වගේ පෙන්වනවා පෙන්වන්නේ. ඒ කියන්නේ මෙතන මේ විඥාන නාම රූප දෙක අතර තියෙන අන්‍යෝන්‍ය ප්‍රති සම්බන්ධය. ඒක හරි ලස්සනට පෙන්නලා තියෙනවා නල කලාප කියන සූත්‍රයක් තියෙනවා. ඒ නල කලාප සූත්‍රයෙන් අදහස් කරන්නේ බටකෝටු මිටි දෙකක්. දැන් අපි හිතන්න කොහේ හරි ගිහිල්ලා බටකෝටු මිටි දෙකක් බැඳ ගන්නවා. මෙතන දැන් තනි බටකෝටු මිටිය මේ කෙලින් තියන්න බැරි නිසා ඒක අනිත් බටකෝටු මිටියත් එක්ක මේ විදිහට තියෙනවා. මෙහෙම ඒතර මෙහෙම තියෙනකොට එකක් හරි ගැළව වුණොත් දෙන්නම වැටෙනවා. ඒතර ඔන්න ඔය අන්‍යෝන්‍ය ප්‍රත්‍ය සම්බන්ධය නල කලාප සූත්‍රයේදී මේ බටකෝටු මිටි දෙකක එක එකකට එකක් උදව් කිරීමේ උපමාවකින් පෙන්ලා දීලා තියෙනවා. ඒතර විඥානයේ නාම රූපයට උදව් කරනවා නාම රූපයේ විඥානයට උදව් කරනවා. මේ දෙන්නා අන්‍යෝන්‍ය වශයෙන් ප්‍රත්‍ය වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. ඔව්. සම්නාස දැන් මට හිතෙනවා වේදනා පච්චය තන්නා එතනින් අල්ලන්ට ලේසි කියලා පුළුවන් ඔව් එතනත් පුළුවන් ඒ කියන්නේ එතනට ඒක ඒක ඇද අර මුලදී ෆිසිකල් සයිඩ් එක විතරක් නම් යෝගියෙකුට අහු වෙන්නේ එතෙන්දී අපිට ට්‍රයි කරන්න පුළුවන් කන් මේ පස්ස පච්චයා වේදනා කියන එක දැන් සරලව ඒක අඳුර ගන්න පුළුවන් නේ දැන් දෙකම ෆිසිකල් වගේනේ ස්පර්ශයක් වෙනවා ස්පර්ශයත් වෙනකොට තමයි දැනීම පහළ වෙන්නේ දැනීමක් වේද වේදනාවක් පහළ වෙන්නේ එතනින් අල්ලන්න පුළුවන් පස්ස පස්ස යා දැන් ඕක දුනු කරගෙන යනකොට තව තව මයින්ඩ්ෆුල්නස් වැඩි වෙනවා concentration value no da ibeta wage hita dihat balena etokota yaata therna ame vedanawa tekkama ne me me tannhawak ka den tannhawa thiyenne ba hite eta eka illa tanikara mental etora etana ara aasa me mokadda vedanawa tekka tannhawakut wenawa kiyen eka allanna puluwa definitely oh etokota den tanupassana karnakota 
සිතුවිල්ලක සතුට තිබ්බොත් වගේ ඒක ටිකක් වෙලා රදා පවතිනවා වෙන්න පුළුවන් නැත්නම් ටග් ගාලා බලන්නත් කලින් යනවා යනවා එතකොට ඒ වගේ ඒක වෙනම වේදනා සංස්කාව එහෙම කියලා දෙකක් විතර වහු වෙනවා එහෙම වෙන වෙනම බලන් ඕනේද නැත්නම් මේක उनेकदेम <laughs> තවටියක් ගැඹුරක් දකින්න හිතෙන්ම එනවා නිකන් පොඩි ආසාවක් කැමැත්තක් එනවා. ඒක වැරද්දක් නැහැ. එතකොට පුළුවන් අර කිව්ව වගේ ඉන්න ආ මේ තර මේ වේදනාව පහලා ඊට පස්සේ තමයි මේ තණ්හාව ආවේ. වේදනාවට එන්න කලින් මොකද්ද ආ මෙතන ස්වර්ශයක් වුණා. එහෙම කියලා අර ඕනනම් විහාගෙන යන්න පුළුවන් එහාට. ඉතින් අගේ අර විවිධ ක්‍රම තියෙනවා. අනිත්‍ය වශයෙන් දැකීම කියන එක ක්‍රමයක්. එයාට අර හේතු ප්‍රත්‍ය සම්බන්ධය දැකීම තව ක්‍රමයක්. සංකත ලක්ෂණ සංකත ස්වභාවය දැකීම තව ක්‍රමයක්. ඔයාලා ඉතින් විවිධ ක්‍රම බුදුහාමුදුරු පෙන්ලා දෙනවා. ඒ අව සතුට හවි දුක හවි ඒ දිහා බලාගෙන ඒකේ වෙනස් වීම බලනකොට හිතෙනවා සතුට වුණත් මේක පොඩ්ඩ වෙලාවයි දුක වුණත් පොඩ්ඩ වෙලාවයි එහෙම එහෙම එකක් එනවා වෙනවා හරි අනිවාර්යයෙන් සතුරත් කන්ඩිෂන් දුකත් කන්ඩිෂන් එතකොට ඒ විදිහට බලන එක හොඳයිද කියලා වරදක් නැහැ වරදක් නැහැ ඒ කියන්නේ අපි ඉතින් බලන්න ඕනේනේ සතුට කියන්නේත් වේදනාවක් දුක කියන්නේත් වේදනාවක් එතකොට සතුට බල සතුටත් අපි වේදනා මුහුණුවරින් බලනවා මේක මගේ සතුට කියලා නෙමෙයි මේක නැ සතුට අපි දුන් හිතේ සතුට. ඉතින් සතුට දිහා බලනවා මෙයා කොහොමද දැන් වැඩ කරන්නේ? ඉතින් යත් යනවා යන්න. දුකක් එනවා. ආ දැන් ඔයා කොහොමද වැඩ කරන්නේ? යත් යනවා. ඔක්කොම මේ අපිට අයිති නැහැ නිකන් මේ ආගන්තුක කට්ටිය ඔක්කොම යන්න ආපු කට්ටිය. ඉන්න ආපු කට්ටිය නෙමෙයි. සම්නාස අනිශ්චිත කියන එකට අනිමිත්ත සමාධිය කියන්නේ. ඇත්තටම ඔයා කියන්නේ ක්ලෝස් රිලේෂන්ෂිප් එකක් තියෙනවා. ඒ කියන්නේ දැන් හිතන්න හොඳට කෙනෙක්ට අනිත්‍ය ලක්ෂණය ප්‍රකට වීමෙන් නම් හිත අනිශ්චිත වුණේ අපිට අපි ඒකට කියනවා අනිමිත්ත සමාධිය ඇත්ත මෙතන වැඩෙන්නේ කියලා. මොකද යාර නිමිති ගන්න බැරි වෙලා. ඒ කියන්නේ දැන් අපි හිත බැහැ ගන්න නම් නිමිති ගන්න ඕනේ. ඒ කියන්නේ දැන් මම දෙයකට ඇලෙන්න නම් මම ඒකේ ලස්සනයි මෙයා හැඩයි මෙයා මේ මෙහෙමයි මෙහෙමයි කියලා ඉතින් මම ඒ නිමිති ටිකක් සලකුණු ටිකක් ගන්න ඕනේ. එතකොට තමයි ගිහිල්ලා හිත ඇලෙන්නේ බැඳෙන්නේ ඒ ඔක්කොම ටික වෙන්නේ. හැබැයි නිමිති ගන්න බැරි තරම් මේක නිරන්තරයෙන් බොහොම සීග්‍ර සීග්‍රව වෙනස් වෙනවා නම් මම නිමිති ගන්න බැරි වෙනවා. එතකොට හිත නිදහස් වෙනවා. ඉතින් ඒක තමයි අනිමිත්ත කියලා කියන්නේ. ඉතින් හිත නිදහස් කියන්නේ ආයෙත් අනිශ්චිතයි කියන එක. ඇසුරක් නැහැ මොකක් හත් ඇසුරු කරන්නේ නැහැ. මොකද අනිශ්චිත කියන එක දැන් පොදුවේ අපිට රිෆර් කරන්න පුළුවන් ඕනර් ස්ටේට් එකක්. හිත කොහෙවත් බැඳිලා නැත්තම් අනිශ්චිතයි. හැබැයි මේ අනිශ්චිත භාවයට එළඹෙන්න විවිධ මාර්ග තියෙන්න පුළුවන්. අවිමුක්ති මුඛයක් निर्वाण <laughs> 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 Well, uh, so I think uh, we have completed. Are there any other questions? No, right? Does anyone has any questions or anything to ask? Hari, ane katte na. Uh, this is about yesterday's sermon. Uh, Bante, you said like. Um, if uh, uh, monks asked uh, buddha mudra whether if every, everyone who does vipassana attain nibbana then buddha said no uh, the monks who cling to uh, uh, that samadhi samadhi so now we cling to nirvana we does we give dana we do that we do we, we want nirvana so with the uh, intention of achieving nirvana so we also attached to nirvana so that means we are pushing away nirvana by doing all this we come to meditate uh, no, to no we no the thing is we can't say so 
The thing is, uh, at the beginning, we have to have kind of an intention. I mean, uh, prematurely, we can't relinquish. First, we need to have something to explore, to investigate. And then the understanding may develop, the relinquishment develop, the necessary, uh, say, un conditions, necessary maturity may then develop. So therefore, at the beginning, having some craving, even to Nibbana, no problem. Having some conceit, he could do it, why I can't do it, no problem. That is actually being asked by uh, this, uh, you know, Venerable Ananda explains it. Tanhan nissaya tanha pahatabba. Then, manang nissaya manang pahatabbu. Then, tanhan nissaya tanha pahatabba. I can say, by means of craving, you are eradicating craving. <laughs> appear like kind of contradicting but using craving you are ultimately eradicating craving and similarly using conceit you are ultimately eradicating conceit so idea is at the beginning we don't have much idea I mean, what, why, what we are going to do, what is Nibbana and all these things we, are, we don't have much idea so we, we simply wish okay may I attain Nibbana may you attain <laughs> Nibbana so like I mean there's no problem no, kind of an innocent wish and assume now you are getting onto the practice and now you are doing the practice, then you have a kind of a better kind of an understanding of Nibbana. Then you are furthering your attention, you are furthering your practice, you are coming to another level. Even the previous Nibbana is not the Nibbana now. <laughs> so your perspective about Nibbana also evolve. So your aim evolve. And uh, previously you had a kind of a Nibbana that I am the one attaining Nibbana, I, I need to attain Nibbana, I, win, I want to get rid of Apaya. <laughs> At least in this life I should get out of Apaya. So I mean, there is I and I am destined to go to Apaya, <laughs> so I should avoid it now somehow. <laughs> so this is the kind of an idea I have, right? So then, uh, so I am practicing, 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 then uh, Sometimes after practicing the Hatu Manasikara, this I, who is destined to go to Apaya, is not there. <laughs> now who is going to Apaya? <laughs> so isn't it? I mean, this is how it is happening now. So I, I am the one who developed Vipassana, but on the way, I, I see, dropped. Yes, I dropped. Yes. Bus is going, but no I. Bus is now go not going to up. It has ten, taken a different turn now. <laughs> I also has get down from it. <laughs> so that's why I mean the, the aim, what you define as Nibbana also evolved. Because w what we understood as Nibbana, what we perceive as Nibbana, as a normal craving putujjana, is a quite, uh, quite, uh, quite wrong in a way. ंग understanding it will evolve, it will change as we continue our practice. Ekai, this uh, Ananda Thero is telling, so you may have craving at the beginning, can't help. That is the one motivating you, move forward. But as you are moving forward, and you may understand, so I have to tanha I have to eradicate tanha. <laughs> so the craving also is eradicating, removing, fading away as you are moving closer to Nibbana. Ultimately, once you are in Nibbana, no craving, can't have craving, tanhakkaya. So therefore, I mean, as Buddhist, wishing for Nibbana and trying to achieve Nibbana and motivating yourself, I need, to I need to do it like that at the beginning, to drive yourself is not, not harmful. You and need it. You, you need, need it. it. You need it, exactly. You need it. And as you are moving forward, slowly you will understand, okay, this is this refinements I have to do. So this is the proper way of uh, I need to do it. So likewise, you get a better understanding about what to do. So I, what I understand is Nibbana is there within us. Mm. But because the craving, lust, the global, the moho, it's covered. 
So if we can remove all those, the nibbana will uh, will ah, yeah, appear. Yeah, I mean, appear. You, you don't need to. You don't need to do anything, anything to, have, to it. have it. It's what we need to do is get rid of lower dosha moha. Out, uh, you just have to remove that outer sheath. So it's it's freely available. So laddha muda nibbutim bunjamana. So Buddha says very beautifully. I mean, you are you are enjoying it freely. Now that's why I mean you didn't need, you don't need to pay a bribe to have nibbana. <laughs> it's there. It's there. Under your very nose, it's there. But we are searching on the sky. We are wishing in the next life. But it's within you. I mean, it's so, so beautiful actually the way Buddha is putting it. It's, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's available. But unfortunately, we are always searching outside, attributing it to someone else that he will help me to achieve Nibbana, whatever it is. So likewise, uh, but ultimately Buddha says, I mean, it is with you, I mean, it is there. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Okay, then uh, we'll wind up the session. So uh, we have spent some, about one hour in the uh, question and answer session. And similarly, this whole three days, most of you have spent quite some time uh, practicing uh, mindfulness, concentration, wisdom, and with that we were able to accumulate a lot of merits. So let's share these merits with all the past day relatives and uh, all the um, celestial beings and uh, whoever in need of merits. And uh, today, transferring of merits, morning dana, Ajit, Sushila, and Dishna, and to transfer merits to our recently departed beloved pet. Duty, and then uh, may this merit aid him to get out of the animal realm and to be born as a human being with access to true dhamma. Then lunch dana was offered by Dr. Rani Fernando in memory of late husband Tissa Fernando. So with these all merits, so we sh we wish all the past relatives relatives also may be able to, as mentioned here, to uh, meet the true dhamma to practice the dhamma and to attain path fusion nibbana so while keeping all these good wishes in our mind let's recite the traditional verses etavata ja amhehi sambatang punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya etavata ja amhehi sambatang punya sampadam sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya Etavata cham hehi, sambatang punya sampadang, sabbe satta anumodantu, sabbe sampati siddhya, aka satta chabumata, deva naga mahidika, punyantang anumoditwa, chirang rakantu sasanang, aka satta chabumata, deva naga mahidika, Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhantu desanang Akasatha chabumata devanaga mahidika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhantu mamparang Idang vo nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayo Idang vo nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatayo Idang vo nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Imina punya kame ne mami bale samagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu yave ni bane patia. Imina punya kame ne mami bale samagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu yave ni bane patia. Imina punya kame ne mami bale samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu yave nibbana patia Sadu, sadu, sadu. <coughs>